Hi everyone, my name is Kaisa and today I'll be leading you through a quick all levels vinyasa flow practice. So if you have props, you'll need two blocks and a strap, but if not, no worries, we can always work around it. So if you have a strap, have it nearby and we'll lie down flat on our backs. So you can just lie down either with the legs straight out in front of you with the feet flopping out to either side or maybe bend the knees, plant the feet if you know that's better for your low back. So just listening to your body here. And we'll start to connect to the breath. So slow down the inhales and the exhales. Even them out. And I challenge you today throughout this practice to recognize any habits that you might fall into with breath. So maybe you start to take loud breaths through the mouth. Maybe you take short, shallow breaths. Or maybe you even start to hold the breath. So just recognizing that and making a conscious effort to come back to a slow, steady breath in and out through the nose. Take a couple more slow rounds of breath here. And we'll start to activate the body. So straighten the legs if they weren't already. Press the big toe mounds forward. Peel the outer edges of the feet back. Dig the heels down into the ground so that you can feel the backs of the legs activate. And at the same time, press the thigh bones down so you feel the front of the legs activate. And keeping all of this work in the left leg, pull the right knee into the chest, wrap the hands around the shin. Maybe roll out the ankle for a second. Check that the left thigh hasn't popped off the mat, so press it back down if it has. And we'll grab the strap, wrap it around the ball of the right foot you can straighten into the leg. So before you start to pull the foot back towards you, back out of the pose for a second, so maybe lower the leg a little bit. And we'll find the alignment here first before we get into that deeper stretch. So check that the right leg, the right hip hasn't hiked up. So maybe even take your hand, put it into the hip crease and manually push it down. A lot of us fall into the habit of the hip hiking up without even realizing. So push it down manually so the hips are level. Press the big toe mound into the strap and make sure that the right leg is completely straight. Sometimes we think it is if you can feel that stretch in the hamstring, but you know that it's completely straight if the quad is really working. Maybe if you can keep all of this work, start to pull the leg towards you. Not only using the strength of your arms here, but also activating those deep belly muscles to pull the leg forward. One more round of breath here. And we'll move the strap off to the side. Keep the right leg straight and very slowly lower it down to meet the left. We'll set the legs again, so check that they're straight. Push down with the thigh bones and keeping this work in the right leg, pull the left leg into the chest. Check that the right thigh bone hasn't popped off the mat. And we'll take the strap and wrap it around the ball of the left foot. Straighten into that left leg and back out of the pose for a second. So we're gonna check our alignment here. Check that the left hip hasn't hiked up again. So again, you can take your hand, put it into the hip crease and manually push it down towards the right heel. Press the big toe mound into the strap so you know the leg is completely straight, the quad is working. And if you can keep all of this without the hip hiking up or without the leg bending, maybe pull the foot closer to your face. Not only using the strength of your arms on the strap, but also activating those deep belly muscles. One more round of breath here. and we'll take the strap, set it off to the side, keeping that left leg totally straight, lower it down slowly to meet the right. You can pull both knees into the chest, maybe rocking back and forth for a second. And we'll come up to seated. So we'll come into a Sukhasana shape or cross-legged shape and just do some quick hip opening. 
you don't necessarily need super open hips for where we're going today, but I think that throwing in some gentle hip opening is always good to release some tension. So come into Sukhasana, tent the fingers back behind you, pull the chest forward, lift up through the crown of the head. And if you're already feeling a stretch in the outer hips here, you can stay here or maybe start to fold forward. If you just automatically round into the back here to get the forearms to the mat, you're not necessarily getting the benefit of the pose. So pull the chest forward, nice long flat spine. Maybe play around with the pressure in the hands. If you push the hands forward, but you're not actually moving the hands, you're just pushing them forward, you might feel that the sit bones are more heavy on the mat. If you pull the hands towards you, again, without moving them, you might feel a deeper stretch in the outer hips by pulling the chest forward more. One more round of breath here. We'll start to walk out of that. Uncross the legs and recross on the other side. And we'll do that again. So tent the fingers back behind you, lift up through the crown of the head. And if you're already feeling a stretch here, then you can stay or you can start to fold forward. Again, try not to just round into the back here. Pull the heart forward. You want to be a nice long line from the tailbone to the crown of the head. So lengthen the spine. Maybe you can fold forward as long as the upper back and the shoulders aren't rounding. One more round of breath here. And we'll come back to center. You can just roll over the shins and come to tabletop. The wrists are under the shoulders, the knees are under the hips, and we'll inhale, lift the chest, pull the heart forward, roll the shoulders back into our cow pose, and exhale, push into the hands, reverse and round into the back, coming into our cat pose. And we'll take that a few more times, so inhale, lift the chest, and exhale, round into the back. One more time, inhale, lift. And the work here is in the upper back, so you don't wanna be working too hard with the neck and the lower back because that's where we're naturally bendy and we can injure ourselves. And exhale into our cat pose. We'll come back to a neutral spine. You can bring the big toes together, widen the knees, and press the hips back into child's pose. Just for a breath or two. You can rest the arms where they're comfortable. I like to have them down by my sides just to give my shoulders some relief. And when you're ready, we'll start to crawl the fingers as far forward as you can. Press through the finger pads so the arms are lifted off of the mat. And we'll tuck the toes, lift the hips up to downward facing dog. You can bend the knees as much as you need to here if you have tighter hamstrings. The goal in downward facing dog is to have a nice straight spine. So you wanna be a straight line from the crown of the head to the hips. So if you need to bend the knees, maybe shorten the stance a little bit. Press into the hands to pull the hips up and back. Maybe try to press the heels down towards the mat, but it doesn't actually matter if you get them there. Just the action of pushing them down will activate the legs. One more inhale and exhale, look forward and we'll step the feet to the hands. Inhale right into our halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana and exhale, fold Uttanasana. Inhale, hinging at the hips, rise all the way up and exhale, hands to heart center. Surya Namaskar A. Inhale, reach the arms up overhead. And exhale, hinge and fold. Inhale, reach the heart forward. You want a nice flat back here, so if you need to lift the hands up to the shins or even the thighs, then do so. More weight into the balls of the feet. And keeping that length in the spine, so don't fold back in, we'll plant the hands and step the feet back to plank. So press through the hands to inflate between the shoulder blades. 
push the heels back so the legs are completely straight and they're helping you out. And in a moment, we'll lower to our belly. So when you lower, make sure that your elbows are tight to your sides. So exhale, lower. Untuck the toes when you get there. And we'll take a second to set the legs here. So press into the tops of the feet so the kneecaps lift. Spin the inner thighs up towards the ceiling without letting the, the ankles flop out. And check that the hands are right under the elbows. With an inhale, we'll lift the head, neck, and chest, low cobra. Check that the feet didn't get light here. Press down through the tops of the feet. Roll the shoulders back. Check that you're not craning the neck. One more inhale here. And exhale, lower the chest. And we'll make our way back through modified plank. So keep the knees heavy. Try and find that cat shape. So tuck the tailbone. Maybe the belly even starts to lift off the floor. You want the belly to lift first, not the chest. Keep the gaze forward and exhale straight as a board. Press back up to modified plank. Try not to let the head fall off the neck. Tuck the toes and we'll come back to downward facing dog. A few rounds of breath here. Notice if the breath got away from you. Press the hands forward. One long inhale, and at the end of your exhale, look forward and step the feet to hands. Right into your halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana, pull the heart forward, and exhale Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, lift all the way up, hinging at the hips, and exhale, hands to heart center. And we'll take that again, so inhale, lift the arms up overhead, Exhale, hinge and fold, flat back. Inhale, reach the heart forward, lengthen the spine, and exhale, step back to plank. We'll be here for a few rounds of breath. Press through the hands. Make sure you're not piking or sinking in your center. And exhale, lower to your belly. Untuck the toes, press into the tops of the feet, Inhale, lift the head, neck, and chest, low cobra. And low cobra is a back bend that will strengthen the, the muscles of your upper back so you can stay here or press into the hands and come into our upward facing dog. So the only point of contact with the mat right now are my hands and the tops of the feet. So the legs are lifted, the quads are working. Roll the shoulders back, check that the wrists are right under the shoulders, and we'll make our way back to downward facing dog. A few rounds of breath here. Maybe take a rest in child's pose. And if you have a block, just check and make sure that it, you have one near the front edge of your mat because we'll be using it in a moment. So if you were in child's pose, make your way back to downward facing dog. And with an inhale, leading with the inner thigh, lift the right leg. So check that you're not just opening into the hip here. Make sure that the kneecap and the toes are pointed towards the mat. Check that both arms are completely straight and you can stay here or shift forward to three-legged plank, maybe pull the knee into the chest and step the right foot forward. Help it get there. You want a nice 90 degree angle in your front leg. And without hopping the back foot forward, pivot and plant the back heel. Heel toe the front foot in so the front heel lines up with the back inner arch and we'll bring the forearm up to the thigh bone. Roll open. Check that the knee is stacked over the ankle. Press the left thigh bone back and seal off the outer edge of the foot. Lift the left arm. Roll the left outer ribs up towards the ceiling so the shoulders and the ribs are stacked. And if you can keep this alignment, maybe take the right hand under the shoulder on the inside of the foot. So you want a nice long line from the back heel to the crown of the head. Reach through the left fingers, roll the ribs up even more if you can. One more inhale here. And we'll use the strength of the side body to lift all the way up, stra straighten into the front leg and hands to hips. If you used a block, move it to the outside of the foot 
and check that your left hip hasn't just hiked up. So level the hips, lift the arms, shoulder height, and we'll start to extend through the right hands. So extend as much as you can, keeping this side body nice and long. Keep extending, and when you've gone as far as you can, lower the right hand to the outside of the foot, lift the left arm. So try not to come into this horseshoe shape here. If you need to, lift this bottom arm up even higher. Stack the ribs and the shoulders here. And often when we pay attention to that, we'll let the legs check out. So press the left thigh bone back. Try to even out the weight distribution between all four corners of both feet. So maybe you um, peel the toes off the ground to do that. One more inhale here. Feel that stretch in the inner thigh. And again, using the strength of the side body, we'll lift all the way back up and bend into that front knee just for a moment into Vera 2. So check that the knee isn't buckling or splaying. Keep it right over the second and the third toe. Knee stacked over the ankle. One more breath. And we'll frame the front foot with the hands, move the block off to the side, come onto the ball of the left foot, and we'll step back either to down dog or take a vinyasa. So if you're taking a vinyasa with me, step back to plank, lower to your belly, lift to your back bend, either low cobra or upward facing dog, and we'll meet back in down dog. Check that you have a block available if you're using one. If you were in child's pose, come back to downward facing dog and leading with the inner thigh will lift the left leg. Try not to open the hip. I know my dancer friends tend to come into turned out hips. So make sure that the toes and the knee is facing down towards the mat. You can stay here in your three-legged dog or shift forward to plank. Maybe pull the knee into the chest and we'll step the left foot in between the hands. Help it get there. Check that your front leg is at a 90 degree angle and without hopping the back foot forward, pivot and plant the back heel. Heel toe the front foot in so the front heel lines up with the back inner arch. Make sure that you have a block available and we'll lift the forearm onto the thigh bone and turn the torso open. So check that your back toes are turned slightly forward. So you don't want it to be parallel to the short edge of the mat because you can really twist or injure the knee. Roll the right outer ribs up towards the ceiling. Maybe lift the right arm. And if you can keep the shoulders and the ribs stacked here, maybe lower the left hand to the inside of the foot to your block. And you know you've gone too far if you start to roll forward or maybe the left glute starts to swing back. So firm the left glute in and under you. One more round of breath here. And using the strength of the side body, we'll lift the torso all the way up, straighten into the front leg, and hands to hips. If you used a block, we'll move it to the outer edge of the foot. Check that the hips are level, so the right, the right hip tends to swing out here. So level the hips, lift the arms, and we'll start to extend the left arm forward. So extending as far as you can, keeping that bottom side body completely straight, and lower the hand when you need to. So you can have the bottom hand as high up as you need to, so you're not coming into this horseshoe shape. So lengthen the spine, lengthen the side body, roll the ribs up towards the ceiling, stack the shoulders, press the, the right thigh back, steal off the outer edge of the foot. One more round of breath here. And using the strengths of the sides, inhale all the way up, and just briefly bend into that front leg into Vera 2. Check that that front knee hasn't buckled in or splayed out. Keep it right over the second and the third toes. Keep it stacked over the ankle. One more breath here and we'll frame the foot, move the block off to the side and either step to downward facing dog or take a vinyasa. Connect to the breath again here in downward facing dog or in child's pose. 
Notice if in those standing poses, if you fell into any of those habits that I mentioned at the beginning of the class with the breath. And just taking a moment here in those restful poses to come back to stillness, come back to steadiness. If you were in child's pose, come back to downward facing dog, press the hips up and back, and we'll lift the right leg again, keeping the kneecap and the toes pointed down towards the ground. And with an exhale, step the foot in between the hands. So if you have blocks, we'll lift the hands onto blocks. If you don't, that's okay. You can have either your hands hovering blocks distance or maybe at heart center. The knee is stacked over the ankle. The front leg is at a 90 degree angle. Press the back heel back so you can feel the left leg completely activate. It's completely straight here. And we'll move the blocks about a foot in front of us. So we're moving towards Vera 3. So without kicking or jumping off of that back foot, shift the weight into the front leg, straighten the right leg, lift the left leg, warrior three. Maybe peek under your belly, check that the toes and the kneecap are pointed down, just like we've done in all of those three-legged dogs. Press through the hands if you're using blocks. Nice straight line from the back toes to the crown of the head. Pull the chest forward. One more breath here. And exhale, we'll lower the back leg to the back of the mat. Lengthen the stance if you need to. We'll bring the hands to the hips and lift the torso up. So when you lift, bend the back knee deeply so the pelvis is completely upright. Lift the arms up overhead and we'll interlace the fingers behind the head. Press the elbows in towards each other. Maybe press the left heel back if you can keep the pelvis upright so you feel a nice deep stretch in the left hip crease. If you did that and you immediately shifted forward, then come back to that deep, that deep bend so your pelvis is upright. Keep the elbows pressing in towards each other. One more breath. Inhale, lift the arms up overhead. Maybe gaze up, press the hands, and exhale the hands to the floor. And we'll step right back to downward facing dog. Just notice how that feels side to side. Maybe walk it out for a second. And we'll come onto the other side. So lift the left leg up, keep the kneecap and the toes pointed down, and we'll step the left leg in between the hands and help it get there if you need to. If you have blocks, bring the hands up to your blocks. If you don't, either at hands, hands at heart center or hover the hands a block's distance. The knee is stacked over the ankle. The right heel is pressing back so the right leg is completely straight. And we'll start to shift towards warrior three. So hop the blocks about a foot in front of you. And without jumping off of the back leg, slowly shift the weight into the front leg, straighten the left leg, lift the right leg. Check under the belly that the kneecap and the toes are facing down so the hips are level. Extend through the crown of the head. A few more rounds of breath here. And we'll exhale, lower the back foot to the back of the mat. Lengthen the stance if you need to. Hands to hips. And we'll bend deeply into the back leg. So again, we bend deeply so we can get the pelvis completely upright and you get a stretch in the right hip crease or the right hip flexor. Inhale, lift the arms up overhead, interlace the hands behind the head and squeeze the elbows together. Maybe you can press the right heel back as long as you don't shift forward. So keep your pelvis upright, keep your, your torso upright. The tailbone is pointing towards the ground. One more inhale here. Lift the arms up overhead. Maybe gaze up, press the palms, and we'll exhale back down. Frame the foot with the hands and press back to downward facing dog. Come back to the breath here, either resting here in downward facing dog or resting in child's pose. And we'll start to set up for a dolphin plank, everyone's favorite. <laughs> so you can come down from down dog if you were there, sit back on your heels. And we'll start, if you have a strap, 
we'll measure it from shoulder to shoulder. So it should measure from the outer shoulder to outer shoulder. If you don't have a strap, don't worry. We'll just be really careful about not letting the elbows splay out. So you can interlace the fingers, tuck the bottom pinky under so you have a nice flat, even surface. Lower the forearms. You can have the strap right above the elbows. Again, if you don't have a strap, just be careful that your elbows aren't splaying farther than um, shoulders distance. And we'll step the right foot back, followed by the left, coming into dolphin plank. So check that you aren't sinking or piking in your center. Press the heels back so the legs are completely active. Press through the forearms and the elbows. Pull the chest forward. Keep the gaze forward. Keep the breath steady and slow. A few more rounds of breath here. And exhale, you can lower the knees. If you used a strap, you can set it off to the side. And keep the hips high. And we'll crawl the fingers forward. Let the chest melt down, coming into our puppy pose. So this just gives a nice stretch in the shoulders. If you have tight shoulders, then just breathe into it. If you have open shoulders, try not to collapse, keeping the arms straight and strong. You can start to walk the hands back, push yourself up. And we'll make our way over to a wall. Um, we're working towards headstand. So if you don't have a wall, no worries, don't panic. We can always stay in headstand prep. You're still working all the actions that you need to come into headstand eventually. So when you're ready, we'll interlace the fingers like we did in dolphin plank, tuck the bottom finger under. You can bring the knuckles up to the baseboard and take the crown of the head in between the, hand, the arms. So it's important that we're right on the crown of the head. We don't wanna to be too close to the forehead or to the back of the head because then we can strain or injure our neck. And if you're not super confident about being on the crown of your head, we can just stay in headstand prep. Um, but if you're taking headstand with me, interlace the fingers and bring the crown of the head in between the forearms. So you don't want the elbows to splay too far out or else you won't have anything to support your head. So you're really nestling the crown of the head in between the forearms and the elbows. Tuck the toes, walk in as far as you can. You want the hips to be stacked over the shoulders. So you can stay here in headstand prep, maybe lift one leg, maybe the other leg floats up. You wanna keep both legs completely straight in that transition and press through the elbows when you're coming up. It'll make it easier to float up. You don't wanna be kicking to get up. If you're kicking, stay in headstand prep because you can injure your, your neck. If you're trying to balance, press through the big toe mound of both feet, completely straighten the legs, and maybe when you come down, you come one leg at a time like you did on the way up, or you can play with piking down. So keep the belly completely engaged. and come straight to child's pose when you come out of it. And it's so important that you come straight to child's pose after headstand so you can let the vertebrae of the neck and the upper back to settle. So the general rule of thumb is to hold your, your child's pose for at least half as long as you were up in headstand. So play around with that for a little bit and then take your child's pose and we'll meet after that in downward facing dog. So if you're taking down dog, if you're at a wall, it's nice to put the, the thumb and the forefinger at the wall so you have something to press into and lift the hips. And you wanna take this down dog as comfortably as you can. So maybe you widen the feet a lot. Maybe you make it a really short down dog. We just need to do this to let the head hang so the vertebrae of the neck and the upper back can plump back up after being in that cramp position. When you're ready, you can lower the knees and we'll lie down on our backs. So if you have a block, grab it. 
and we'll lie all the way down. You can have the knees bent, the feet planted, and we'll just take a supine twist to neutralize the spine after all of that work. So if you're taking the twist with me, you can cross the right leg all the way over the left, scoot the hips a little bit over to the right, and drop the hips over to the left. I like to use a block to support my, my knees. You can have the right arm out to the side, maybe gaze over the right fingers, if that's okay for your neck. And just taking a moment here to unwind. Slow down the breath. Notice what that pose brought up for you. Remember that it's not important if we actually came into headstand, but it's important to notice all the thoughts that came up while you were trying it. Inhale the knees back up, uncross, recenter, and we'll come onto the other side. So cross the left leg all the way over the right, scoot the hips off to the left, and lower the knees to the right. Again, I like to use my block as support under the knees. If the knees don't get all the way to the floor, make sure that you have support so this can be as restful as possible. Maybe stretch the left arm out to the side, gaze over the left fingers. Just take a moment here and recognize how your body feels after all of that work. Deepen the breath and let go of everything that that practice just brought up for you. Inhale, lift the knees, uncross, recenter, pull both knees into the chest, maybe rocking back and forth, making small circles with the back. We'll make our way back up to seated. If you have time to take a Shavasana right now, then I highly recommend you do that. But if this is where your practice ends today, I just wanna thank you so much for allowing me to guide you through the practice. Namaste.